we're going to get into this. I'm going to explain just biblically how I think we ought to kind of be, be dealing with people. But we want to make sure, and this is the main point I think I really want to get across, that we don't um, go overboard with, with um, what's the right word I'm looking for, with, with just kind of overwhelming a new believer, a new convert with, with just too much, you know, just, just kind of bombarding them with all this stuff, especially if maybe they're not as excited as you. Now, when people get really excited and they're, and they're on fire, amen, that's great because a lot of people eat it up. I know when I, I wasn't first saved, but I was, uh, I first newly was going to Pastor Anderson's church, you know, I got saved when I was 20, 20 years old. But it was like seven years later when I finally got in a good church. So for those seven years, I was just kind of like, yeah, yeah, whatever. I just didn't really care that much about anything. But once I actually started going to church, then it was like, oh, man, I wanted to listen to the Bible. I'm listening to the preacher. I'm, I'm doing whatever I can to just, to just get more. Right? It was exciting. And the, the fire was lit. But until the fire got lit for me personally... I don't know how much, how well I would have responded to people just trying to almost feel like if they're trying to, to cram it down your throat, right? So in your zeal, this is a war I want to make sure we're not like cramming things down people's throat or trying to push them too far than, than they ought to be pushed, especially when they're a new convert, when they're newly saved. That's, that's probably the most important thing. And, and what we, the reason why we started in John chapter 3 it says we need, to, we need to remember that when someone is a new convert, a new believer, they're a spiritual babe in Christ. They, they're a new believer. You know, Jesus Christ says in John chapter 3, I use this all the time out, so I want to just explain salvation and just the whole concept here. But in verse number 3, he says, Jesus answered and said, oh, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saying with unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, You must be born again. And the moment that we believe from John chapter 1, Verse number 12, the Bible says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. When we put our faith in Christ, that's the moment when, when you are born again. That's the moment we become a child of God. You are born into God's family, and that's spiritually. You're spiritually born again. That's Nicodemus in there saying a song. He's, like, he's thinking physically, right? But Jesus is speaking about spiritually. He's saying, That which is flesh is flesh. And by the way, when he says, born of water, that's the physical birth. Don't let people turn you around and try to make you say, oh no, you need to be baptized and believe. The, the, the born of, being born of water is not baptism. There is no birth. We, we just perform two baptisms today. Mark was not born of water when I dunked him underwater and he came back up. That was not his birth. Now, Lord willing, uh, our, our sixth child will, will be born. And when that child's born, you know what's going to happen is my wife's water is going to break. And then she's going to bring forth. And that child is going to be born. That's born of water. That's, and that's why Jesus followed up with saying that which is born of flesh is flesh. We said, except it may be born of water and of the spirit. That which is born of flesh is flesh, that which is born of spirit is spirit. So he's referring to the spiritual birth. That's the important birth. We all are born of water. We all are born of flesh. If you're sitting here today, you were born physically into this world. You needed to be born in this world in order to be saved, right? Because then you needed your spirit, your spiritual birth. So the spiritual birth is the one then that you receive when you put your faith in Christ. And that birth is, is very much very similar to a physical birth because you start off as as a newborn babe in christ you, you're you're a new creature and there's a lot to learn there's a lot to grow with uh first peter 2 2 you don't have to turn there turn if you go to isaiah 28 first peter 2 2 says as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby 
Now, what that's doing, it's likening the Word of God to babies, physical babies. Physical babies desire their mother's milk. Right? And it's their mother's milk that's going to help them to grow. That's their nourishment. That's their supply. But when they're a baby, they can't handle a T-bone steak. When they're a baby, they can't handle foods and solids. They need that liquid diet. Why? Because they're still growing. Their bodies are still developing. They need to grow. Now, there's nothing wrong with being a baby. We were all babies at one point. But I'll tell you what, at 41 years old, I don't want to keep being a baby, right? You ought not to be a 41-year-old infant or toddler. We need to grow. We want to grow. But babies, they need milk in order to grow. And what the Bible teaches in 1 Peter 2 is to say, hey, you should desire the sincere milk of the Word because getting in the Word, getting in God's Word is going to help those spiritual babies to grow. But being a spiritual baby, you're not going to understand everything. You're not going to be able to comprehend all of the deep things and all the meat of the Word and the things that are really, really hard. So we, as maybe more mature believers, more mature Christians, someone who's gone a little bit further in, in the, the growth, we don't want to approach a baby and try to, try to feed them all the meat Right? On day one. Like, oh, you're just born? Here you go. Here's, here's some of the harder doctrines to understand. Right? Here's, here's some of the stuff that's real difficult. And um, like I said, I understand the zeal. Because I, I'm excited about all this stuff too. But we want to make sure that we're, that we're dealing with the, um, with the new believers appropriately. Now, um, 